Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. We are in Denver, Colorado. We are at the National Bison Association sale and conference. We are down here at the Newgrounds, an awesome place. This is the place where you see some of the best animals are brought to for the show and sale. I got two guests that are gonna be on this video today. We got Les Kroger from Canada and then Gerald Parsons, who's been a part of my stuff before from Oklahoma. They are actually the two judges that judge the animals here at the National Bison Association sale and show. They actually judged them a couple days ago. The sale is tomorrow. I'll be showing that to you. But we're going to go meet with Doc and Les. They're going to talk about some things that they're looking for when they're judging. And if you're wanting to be, a, if you're a new producer or just wanting to learn more about bison confirmation and what should you be looking for when you want to buy some bison, and uh, you know some of the top producers uh, have animals here. And uh, if you, if you want to go to one sale in the United States uh, to see some of the best animals, you come here to Denver, and uh, this is where it all happens. Dr. Gerald Parsons, Stratford, Oklahoma. Uh, Les Kruger from Hanley, Saskatchewan. Oh, we've got probably around 100 animals that are here for the sale. And Doc and Les are going to talk about some things that uh, if you're interested in raising bison and you kind of starting from the ground up, uh, you know, where to begin, what to look for whenever you're um, wanting to raise bison. For me, anyway, one of the main goals or the biggest helps when I was starting uh, to come to Denver at the National Stockyards. This is kind of like the premier of the premier, the best of the best. You can really get an idea of where your herd is, how it fits in, what you may need to do to improve it. Uh, there's all kinds of really, really good animals, some of the best animals here at the Nationals. And you may need to add size to your herd. You may make them bigger. If you may want to put more muscling in your herd, uh, just whatever the deficiencies you have in your herd that you want to do to improve those animals, this is a good place to come because you got a variety of, of those different things and you've got the best of those, those advantages. So it's a good place to, to work on your herd to come into animals such as these. Uh, uh, Les, do you want to? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much that. You're, you're coming here, you're looking at the best animals that all of these producers have on their farms is what they bring to, to showcase what they've been doing. So, you know, I'm coming in one of the, unless you're buying a group of heifers, you know, one heifer might not improve your, your herd genetics. If you're buying a group of heifers, you can, but, you know, we focus on, on conformation and, and muscling. Like, are they, are they filling out properly? We want an animal, we're producing them for meat. So we want them to, uh, you know, to have good production. But where I'm at, like those animals have to travel long distances. So we want to make sure that they, they're sound, they got good feet and legs underneath them. So that's one of my focuses. Uh, you know, we've seen that so much in our industry that, you know, guys can, it, they can hide that. Um, but animals, once they're under stress, you know, they, they really need uh, good legs and good feet underneath them to travel. <coughs> so if, you, uh, if you're looking to change you know, some genetics slightly, uh, you know, go to a different style. Uh, you can do that with your bulls and you can keep your same females. Um, you got to start with a good set of females though, and then and then build on it from there. And then are you keeping your heifers for expanding your own breeding herd or are you uh, bringing in, you know, new, new genetics with, with new heifers? The word confirmation came up and I know that can be complex for some people, but to you guys, what is confirmation? What are some of the basic things that you are gonna look at? I know you talked about feet less and stuff. In the veterinary practice, we do a lot of soundness, breeding soundness on bulls, both semen testing and, and structural correctness. Uh, in bison, I've probably rejected more bulls because of structural incorrectness and they go crippled on their back feet or back legs uh, than I have for actual semen issues. And so it, it is an issue that, that is getting started in the, in the bison herd and one we need to help correct. Uh, we have a group of people, I call them extremists, that tend to want to criticize us for 
selecting animals with better legs, more muscling, and all these different conformational, they say we're changing bison, but uh, that isn't so. Uh, if you go to the wilds, such as Yellowstone or the Woods National Park, uh, those animals are awesome animals. And they've been selected for hundreds of years by the bears and by the wolves and different things there in those herds uh, because the weak and the crooked-legged ones or the ones that go in sound real quick, those are easy kills. So that's the first ones that goes. They don't want to attack a big, stout, strong bull. I mean, that just wears them out or gets them killed. So they go after an easy kill. So they're selecting just like we're selecting the same type of animals but they're just doing it in a different manner. But yet it's okay for them to do it, but but we get criticized for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree with, with that 100%. We're not just selecting for size. That's not our main goal. Um, we're seeing some, uh, some production comes into these shows and sales and these animals might be over conditioned too, you know. So I'm looking for an animal that's gonna convert the feed types that I have and grow to to a finished product as as early as I can, um, but I don't want a cow that's that's too big either. Um, I can't afford to to feed those great big cows. Um, a bison cow won't cycle and rebreed until she's gaining weight, so they need a lot of feed intake for them to to get to that point where they're gaining weight. Um, so that's one factor that I look to. So I'm I'm not looking for over big cows. I don't want um, I don't want to make that my focus. So yeah, my my main focus is just soundness and, and good muscling. Yeah. Because and and if you're a new if you're a new producer and just starting, one of the most important things that I was told, uh, probably from one of y'all, <laughs> is if you're going to get into it, start with good animals. You right. know, that's so important because that's your foundation. That's right. Yeah. And and. And that's what I said earlier on too. <clears throat> if you're growing and, and expanding your herd from keeping your own females and, and expanding your herd that way, you want to make sure you did it right. Yes. Um, we've seen too many times, and I mean, it's happened to me too. All of a sudden, you've got that one cow that just, you know, her calf is small every year, or her calf has crooked legs. You know, that's a genetic thing that that we just have to call out of our herds. Um, it's hard sometimes. You're taking a production animal out um, and you want to replace her, you want to maintain your herd size, but uh, sometimes you just have to yeah. to do it. Yeah. Well, and the great thing about this sale is if you are coming, it doesn't matter if, if you've been producing for a long time or if you're just starting, you can come here and there's a selection of, you mentioned it, some of the best animals and you you can kind of pick and we talked about we talked about diversity, genetic diversity, and this is one of the best places to do that yes. is come and purchase some animals here and take them home, and now you've got some uh, diversity in your own herd. One thing that I would add to that, you know, I, I know that, you know, a lot of these animals have been cared for and, and had really good, uh, their, their nutritional diets have been met really well, but with bison, it's hard to hide structural impurities or, or bad conformation or, or muscling by over conditioning. Like you can, you can see that through it. Um, it, it even exaggerates it, it makes yeah, it, it worse. It, yeah. So that's, that's another good thing about the bison that, you know, it's hard to hide, hard to hide that bad stuff. The, uh, in 92, when I started uh, being raised up in a farm situation where we showed everything, horses, pigs, and cattle. Uh, when I started bison, quality was really important to me and I got laughed at a lot when I would say, hey, uh, you know, where, what's the breeding on it? Where'd it come from? You know, kind of, what's a, what's the a history on it? And they'd say, do you want to buy a buffalo or not? You know, but no, I, I didn't. I, wa I wanted to buy a good bison that, that I could be proud of, I could enjoy looking at. Uh, so that's kind of what I got started with. So in 95, I made my first trip to Denver. Uh, I had a goal of buying the Grand Champion Bull and uh, thank the good Lord I was able to do that. And I took that bull home 
in two years using that bull, I cut my feeding program down one year. Instead of going all the way to 30 months to get to a thousand pound animal, I was doing it in 18. So it saved me a whole year of feeding just through genetics. So that's, a lot of times it's cheaper to feed a good animal than it is one that's not. So. And I think with that too, when I started, um, I didn't have the fortune of, of, of having a vet medicine background and, and some of that other knowledge of, uh, you know, a lot of livestock knowledge. I grew up on a dairy farm, not, not beef production or anything, so our, our focus was, was dairy. Um, and, and maybe I didn't purchase the best cows right off, and, and that's where, you know, we just bought bison. That's what was available, and that's what you bought. And sometimes when you do that, it can take you a long time to get out of that uh, situation where when, you know, you get a guy like Gerald or, or some of these producers that have been in it a long time and are willing to share uh, their knowledge, uh, help the new guy coming out. I just... I can't express how important that is. Go look around and it doesn't matter if you're starting with your facilities right through to the animals that you're buying. You know, learn from, don't just go to one person. Go get, get a few different opinions and get some, you know, there's some good people out there that'll kind of mentor, if you will, people, you know, getting into the industry and willingly, like, um, you know, we got, we got a lot of pride in what we're doing in this industry and, and uh, a lot of people are willing to help out new yeah. producers coming in. I will, coming in. I will say that as a young producer coming here, the great thing about this sale and show and conference is all the people, like you're right. It's, there's no secret, you know, it's like everybody wants to help everybody raise bison. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have the same goal of, of growing and doing the right things with the, with the bison. So it's a, uh, if you are wanting to be a new producer, this is a great place to, to come and, and meet, you know, lots of new people and uh, people like Les and Doc that have been in the business for a long time. You know, you're making a big investment, you know, like I say, whether it's infrastructure, your handling facilities, your fencing, all of that, that's a big investment. And then your animals are another big investment that you want to have last a long time, so. Well, with the longevity of the animal, you're making a lifetime investment. Yeah. 20 to 30 years yeah. could be yeah. possibly, you know. Yeah. So that's uh, another great benefit of raising raising bison. Yeah, that's the silk. <laughs> hey guys, I want to thank a Doc and a Les. You guys know I bought my first uh, set from Doc, but since then met Les. I met Les on my first bison conference in Kansas City. I don't know how, but we did, and probably connection to you uh, somehow but anyways I just want to thank these guys uh, first of all for doing this today and um, hopefully if you're a new producer out there you're just watching and interested in bison um, these guys know quite a bit about it and um, you know that's why we come here and do this is to get together socialize learn and uh, do all those things so and thank them for uh, their help as a mentor to me and uh, you know, I know they've been a mentor to other people so All right, guys, uh, the sale is about to start. Got my catalog here. We're gonna go in here and see uh, these awesome animals, and I'm excited to see where the prices are and whatnot, but we are, uh, maybe we'll buy some bison. We'll see, I don't know. There's a lot of awesome animals here. A lot of good producers that I'd like to have some of their bison someday. I don't know if now is the time. Let's go inside and check it all out. First and second jump from the same place. So this looks to be rock number 10. 
This should be your uh, gold trophy winner weighing in at 546 pounds. It's showed right here in front of us. So grand champion female right here. All right, then some of the bid five down the letter five. Bid a five down the letter five. Bid a five 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 down the letter five five down the letter five. Bid a five 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 down the letter five five down the letter. Give me three. Get three down. Down two two thirty two hundred dollar three two. Mary, you're out. Third two. Now three three thirty three four hundred dollar thirty four thirty four thirty three four hundred dollar now thirty four five. Bid thirty nine hundred dollar three five six hundred dollar thirty six seven hundred dollar spiced by DMA testing. So help yourselves here, your grand champion bull. Somebody give 30 grand. Bid a $30,000, who be 30? Bid a $30,000, who be 30? Bid 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, Grand champion bull, give me 10 grand. Bid a $10,000, 10 to 10. Bid a $10,000, 10 to 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, Give me five grand, boys. Let's go. Five dollars. Hey! Okay, so we're down here at the, uh, we're on the, this is the actual stockyards area. So here's the uh, sale facility back here behind me. I just came back here to check out the animals and kind of show you a little bit about them working them. The buffalo arrows are down here and they've been working at these bison all week. These buffalo arrows have been here since like Monday or something like that. And as people start to bring in these animals to sell the buffalo arrows, um, work and uh, sort them out. They actually take care of the animals during the week, uh, feed and water them, and uh, and then on the day of the sale, run them through the uh, arena. And then after they go through the arena and they're sold to their new owner, um, they're sorted in certain pens so that they can load out um, for the sale. And so that's kind of what these guys are doing right now is they're um, separating them in pens and getting them ready for their new owner to uh, pick them up once the sale is over. So uh, these guys put in a lot of work during the week, a lot of time. Um, so they're here way before the members are for the conference and stuff. And then the conference is Thursday, Friday, and the sale is on Saturday, which is going on right now. So I've got to head to the airport and get back home to Oklahoma. I miss the girls, I miss the bison. So I want to thank Doc Parsons, and I also want to thank Les, uh, first of all, for their mentorship for so many people. And uh, I know they're a huge benefit to the National Bison Association and just the bison world, having guys like that that are all part of this. And, and I've been able to get close to those guys on a personal level and a uh, huge benefit uh, for a young producer like myself that's trying to do the right things and, uh, and learn from them and try to be a, a good bison producer uh, in this industry. If you ever want to raise bison, uh, guys, reach out to me. You can email me. There's a whole lot of people in this industry that will help and are willing to help you get started and just help you if you're currently raising bison. So we're all here for you. We're a big bison family, always wanting to help each other. So thank you guys for watching us and we'll see you back in Oklahoma. Y'all keep ranching.